beautiful. <laughs> In the last weeks of the summer of 2019, I decided I was going to travel to Iceland and attempt to cross the Icelandic interior by bicycle. Beautiful in a way that I can't even put to words, honestly. I will be traveling for up to 10 days, carrying all my own food, water and supplies. There will be no opportunity for resupply or assistance from anyone. This is that trip. Well, I've arrived in Keflavik airport. I've got the bike all set up. It weighs about 45 kilos right now. Well, I've been riding on this four lane motorway for like an hour and a half now. Well, that did not go to plan. I'm so hungry, I'm so tired, and I just want to pitch a tent and then go to sleep. That's my campsite for the first evening. Fingers crossed there's a bus that will take me to where I need to be, waiting in two hours. I missed my bus by about five minutes because I got lost on the way. Honey, you racked. Complete fucking um, I'm working on some ideas of what I could do to try to fix this. Go to Iceland, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Actually, no one said that. Only I said that. I'm an idiot. Well, it's Monday morning. Um, I arrived into Akuri uh, last night at about midnight. I found a new rack. With any luck, I can fit it to this bike. Back on the road. With my pannier rack replaced, I was finally free to embark on the adventure I'd come here for. I could feel the stress that had built up over the last two days fading away, to be replaced with a growing feeling of apprehension for the challenge that lay ahead of me. windy outside. I feel like I'm just gonna vlog a lot in the next few days, just if only just to keep my sanity. At the beginning of this trip, I packed two condiments, sriracha and ketchup. I just don't know which is which because they look the same, so I guess I'll find out when I put it on my food. It looks like there's a car coming. Might be a while till it gets here though. The German man in a Land Rover gave me two stickers. He went his adventures crossing South America and America all the way to Alaska when he was younger with a bicycle. The wind is getting even stronger, which is making it even harder to ride, but that's okay. Um, I'll hope to do another 10k today, maybe pitch my tent beside a lake or something. Well, I've arrived at my campsite. It's down there. My tent is looking rather pretty today. I rode a fair bit today, I think about 80k into a strong headwind, which was pretty challenging. <laughs> Because by the way, I have like 10 or 15 kilos of just pure food on my bike and it's just brutal to climb hills with, I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of like soup. It's like soups, thicker, goopier brother. The fact that I've got myself here under my own steam with my own bicycle, absolutely <laughs> justifies bringing the bike, I guess. For the last few days, the bicycle has felt like more of a hindrance than it has been an aid. But uh, when you set off in a sprawling city and you just ride and ride and at the 
end of the day you can find yourself in a place like this um, it's just stunning and it's 100% worth it <laughs> so I'm gonna stop talking quite a lot colder overnight. I woke up about four in the morning but it must have dropped down to around about two or maybe one degrees. It's really foggy outside and uh, it's moments like these that make me very happy that I brought this extremely warm sleeping bag and all the extra layers because uh, it's not warm and uh, if I didn't have this I'd be having a real unpleasant experience right now. I've got the, got the stove lit, uh, make the coffee. It's pretty damn cold. So that beautiful view from yesterday, yeah, it's gone. It's like cycling, that will be interesting. Very interesting. Really foggy. Visibility is about 20 meters. This road is so smooth. I'm in my highest gear, just maxing it out. Woo! I don't have a GPS, I don't have any signal here. Um, it's a little bit concerning. I think it's the first time on the trip I haven't had any GPS signal. Other than that, I'm gonna fill these water bottles up. Woo! Hydration. Yeah! Hailstorm. Um, it was like summery and warm about three kilometers back. <laughs> Iceland lives up to its reputation for having wild and unpredictable weather. As I'm riding through a hailstorm, Apparently it was snowing, now it's raining. I can't even tell what's going on. So right now I've got to make a decision about whether or not I want to make this trip a loop where I can go back to uh, Accuri, going that way, or uh, I can keep on going this way and try to ride all the way to um, the south, south coast of Iceland. So. It's either do a loop or just go and ride it all the way uh, across Iceland. Um, and as of right now, it is definitely living up to the word Iceland as it is freezing ice everywhere. Sick. Love it. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, it, uh, it got really cold last night. Um, and I woke up around 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't really know exactly when. It must have dropped to a below zero because uh, I could feel I could feel icing on the outside of the tent. Um, so I hurried to get all my electronics, all my batteries and all my camera stuff um, and my phone inside inside the sleeping bag. And I basically grabbed all my extra clothes and I put them all on and then I zipped the sleeping bag all the way tight around every part of my body except my mouth. And as a result my mouth is like really dry and I think it needs chapstick but um, so that was, that was pretty scary, um, but kind of cool. <laughs> ho ho, big one. It's very concerning that I don't know what depth this is. Oh well. So I arrived here in this beautiful mountain hut, um, and this being the end of the season, there's no one here. The mountain ranger who lives here um, gave me some gifts in the form of a can of Pepsi and two pancakes. I'm eating this pancake that has like jam and Nutella in it. That might be just about the most beautiful thing I've ever tasted. It's the best shape ever. Thank you.
be fuck that steep. This is about as adventurous as I get, having to continue riding just to find water. Well, the climbing has begun. Um, I'm in the lowest gear, just struggling to keep the bike moving. Um, headwind right in my face. It's brutal. What weird ass alien landscape am I on right now? Oh, what the? What the actual? F no, 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 no. How the f are you supposed to ride down this in anything? Just uh, woke up and got outside of, out of the tent, um, and obviously it's frosted over uh, overnight. Uh, the outside of the tent is um, frozen. The door was like all frozen up and ice. Uh, oh, it's very cold out here, but uh, I thought I'd come out and show you just because uh, it's uh, pretty beautiful. <laughs> I can see the path going down here. I really, really hope I don't have to go into that. Because if I do, it's definitely gonna take me more than two days to cross it. seven of my bike packing trip across Iceland. I'm standing at 890 meters above sea level, just below the snow line, um, which hopefully is the highest point on this route. Um, I'm 413 kilometers into a 550 uh, kilometer route. Um, haven't had a proper meal in seven days. Uh, haven't had a proper night's sleep in seven days. And uh, I'm loving it. <laughs> um, I wouldn't wish to be anywhere else in the world right now. Well, uh, it would appear that all that snow we got last night has melted and it's coming down on the trail. According to the map, this is the trail. Guess I'm getting wet on the way down. So, uh, after riding through a desert, um, 
for about two hours uh, with like sandstorms blowing in my face. Uh, every time the wind blew, it would just blow dust in my face. It was awful. I arrived here, this beautiful, beautiful hut. Um, and it'll be the first night's sleep I'm gonna get on this trip that isn't gonna be in a tent. And I'm pretty excited about that. Well, here I am, just about ready to go to sleep on my seventh day in Iceland. My first night in a mountain hut in Iceland. Um, makes a nice change from uh, the tent, I'll say that. Well, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning because I heard that it might be good tonight to see the Aurora Borealis. And uh, I'm kinda, kinda glad I did. hot. There is the view. <laughs> this might be the most beautiful thing I've seen ever. It's unreal. On the last day of the trip, I slept in, ate the remains of my dwindling food supply, and then set off to ride the 45 kilometers or so to the coastline where I caught a bus to the airport and returned home to enjoy a hot shower. The most striking aspect of my trip across Iceland was just the surreal feeling of witnessing such beauty in such total isolation. And even now, looking back on it, I question whether or not any of it was real. <laughs>